Alrighty, hello and welcome to lesson 10 of Last Epoch University. I can't believe we're already at lesson 10. Uh, this is going to be offense part two. We did offense part one a few days ago. It is currently already up on YouTube. And of course, if you're watching this not on stream, then so is this. Uh, definitely check out the first one before this one uh, if you want to get it all sort of in order. But uh, it also has timestamps so you can pick out particular spots that you like. So we're going to be covering, well, actually, before we go into what we're going to be covering on this particular lesson, I do have an omission from last lesson that I, I want to cover because it's important. Um, so we talked about added increase in more damage on the last lesson, but what I did not talk about, and this was a pretty big oversight, was added damage scaling on skills, which is a pretty important thing to know if you're trying to figure out how well your damage will scale. What I mean by added damage scaling is we'll go in here to um, LE tools. And where are you at? This is the build planner, okay. And different skills have different added damage scaling on them. So for example, actually, let me go. I like one of my favorite examples is probably more like um, Primalist. Primalist has got a good one. So the default, not passives, the default added damage scaling for skills is 100%. Which means whatever damage you put on added damage not increased or more the added part so like you know the damage on your weapon or the uh, a fixed damage on your weapon so if you put like plus 36 fire damage melee fire damage on your skill that's the added damage portion 100 percent will give you exactly that much but it can scale usually upwards but sometimes downwards so earthquake for example has added damage scaling of 350 percent which means that if you put 10 melee damage on Earthquake, it will count that as 35. So um, that's a lot, it's a lot more. So some skills scale damage a lot higher than others. And if you're trying to do like on, on by the hand calculation of your added, increased and more damage, you need to factor in the skill you're using and what the added damage scaling is to get an accurate representation of how much damage you'll actually do. And you you will get this in two ways. You can either get it on Last Debug Tools and the added damage scaling there, but also if you look under the, the white here, uh, oops, no, of course if I go over it, I can't see anymore. Uh, the white on the tooltip is what shows up in game and it says here added melee damage applies to 300% effectiveness. I do not know why added damage scaling is 350 on this. And added melee damage applies at 300%. If anyone does know that, please let me know. This is like the third skill I've seen where added damage scaling is not equivalent to what the tooltip says. I don't know if that's a tooltip error or an error in LE tools. Um, but most skills, they do show the same. And so it should be relatively accurate um, what number you're actually getting. Okay, so definitely keep that in mind as you're scaling. All right, now that's covered. Let's get into this lesson what we want to cover here. We're going to cover damage over time. We're going to cover attack and cast speed. We're going to cover chance to apply as it goes on to nodes and fixes, what that means and how it works. We're going to cover damage conversions. And we're going to cover how minions work as far as offense goes. Let's start with damage over time. It's a little complex in LE, um, more so maybe than some ARPGs, although there are probably ones that are also very complex. There's uh, a couple of ways this one works, but we'll start out with what damage over time means. Most of you probably know, but some of you may not quite get it. So it just means that the damage that's being done is spread out over a period of time. Now, what that period of time is, or the duration is, is dependent upon two factors. One is the base duration of the skill or ailment that's being, uh, uh, being used or applied. And the other is any increased duration that you can get from gear, skills, and passives. You can increase the duration of what the base is just by that gear skill and passives if you're using that towards the whatever the skill or ammo is. Uh, it's also very important to know that dots are never, dots of damage over time, is they're never a hit. They never will hit themselves. Um, there are some weird, like, not exceptions, but seem like exceptions. So, like, for example, Hail of Arrows has a node that applies a hit on the front of it, but Hail of Arrows itself is still, like, the dot part of, portion of that is still never hit. So dots will never hit themselves, which means they cannot crit, and it means under normal circumstances they cannot apply ailments. Some dots, um, skills, can have the ability to apply ailments within their skill tree. Um, so there are definitely exceptions to this, but just baseline 
if it's a dot it cannot imply like if you have like poison on hit on your gear a dot skill will not apply poison on hit so definitely keep that in mind if you're trying to build a dot skill and you're trying to scale like a dot um tagged skill and using poison on hit or bleed on hit they are not going to work properly good point jim uh they also dots cannot be dodged they're also not affected by any um uh, damage reduction that's on hit based armor um uh, glancing blow those do not affect the damage scaling of damage over time uh so damage over time as we've kind of mentioned here can be either a skill or an ailment so if a skill is tagged as damage over time let me see if i can get you a good example of this the skill is tagged as damage over time like um one of the more popular ones is probably maelstrom as far as primals goes um, you see this one has a damage over tag in blue on it, damage over time tag in blue. That makes this skill damage over time, so all the things we've said about damage over time will apply to this skill. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then ailments get applied on hits generally. So, see. for example, if we pull out, let's pull this actually. So chance to uh, let's see, not poison. Chance to poison on hit. Poison is a, is a good example of an ailment that will apply on a hit. There are other ways to apply it, um, but generally these are applied on hit. So you'll need a hit skill to uh, to apply it that way. Um, okay. So how do you scale damage over time? There are multiple ways. Um, so if you have an ailment that's on hit, like poison, the chance to apply prefixes or um, passives or in the skill trees is one way to scale it the more you have chance to apply the better we'll get into um chance to apply here in a minute as well a little more detail also increase the damage types to increase poison damage or if it's bleed if you increase fizz damage um or if it's like a void damage over time you increase void damage that will also do it um increased amulet duration since it's uh based on ticks each tick is worth uh, a percentage or a portion of the damage. If you increase the duration, it'll actually just another tick is added on. And so more duration equals more damage. And increase slash more damage of a skill that applies dots. Um which includes hit damage increase. So if like you um for example, if you're applying a dot and uh you're using a skill that says um gives the skill 20% more damage, that will work. That will help with the, the dot that it's applying even if it's not hit. Um, but if the more damage skill says 20% more damage on hit with that skill, that will not affect any damage over time you you apply with that skill. So that's like the only caveat. If it says on hit, it won't affect your damage over time, even if you're applying the damage over time with on hit. I know that's a little confusing, but um, the actual ailment itself is not a hit, and so it doesn't count, even if you're applying it with a hit. You like to interrupt? Oh uh, boy, llama. Oh god. Oh god. It depends on why you're interrupting. Okay, let's get, let's talk about chance to apply a little bit here. <laughs> Yogi says no. There you go. So uh, percent chance to apply the ailment, which we just like covered an example of this. So chance to poison on hit. This one has a, for example, eleven to thirty percent chance to poison on hit. So if you've got that and you got a max roll tier one. This is, I, I think, on a, on idle. Yeah, this is on idle. You'll have 30% chance on every hit to apply poison. That can, of course, stack. If you have two 30s, you have 60. You have three 30s, you have 90. You have four, you have 120%. Now, this is where things can get confusing for some players. So, what happens if I have 120%? That's more than 100%, right? So, I'm guaranteed a stack of poison in that case. But I also have a chance for another. So I have, in that particular case that I just showed, I have 120%, which means I have one guaranteed stack, and then I have 20% chance to apply two stacks. Now, if I have 220%, then I'm guaranteed two stacks with a 20% chance of getting three stacks, so on and so forth at Infinium. So if you manage to have a 1,020%, you'd have 10 stacks guaranteed on hit, and then 20% chance to get 11th. Uh, so some ammos though do have caps. They're fairly uncommon, 
Like, Time Rot has a cap on how many... I think it's actually one. I think you only apply one Time Rot. Um, but Major Dot Elements do not have a cap. So you can inf infinitely stack Bleed, Poison, Ignite, Frostbite, assuming you can keep the duration long enough to get, like, whatever number you want. Uh, you can keep capping it, or stacking it up and up and up, and you'll notice that the, the Dot Tick will get larger and larger as you do that. Okay. Let's talk about attack and cast speed. This is a very easy one in comparison to some of the other things we talked about, particularly damage over time. Um, so I was actually going to ask Tonk to make sure I was fully right on this one, but I'm pretty confident in myself on this one. Uh, so to get your base attack speed, you need to factor in both the weapon base itself as well as the speed of the skill, the base speed of the skill to determine your base speed. So... Pull back up our handy dandy last epoch. Tools. So, for example, these one hand swords here have a base attack rate 1.15, 1 1.2, 1 1.25. We go to a slower one, club 0 0.98, 0 0.98. So, one is like the, like, is there an average in the game? One is like your average. Um, if you have one, you'll get, you'll get the expected speed of the skill. If you have higher than that, it's actually faster. And if you have lower than that, it'll be slower. So, on the skill side, like a skill that has um, an attack speed or a, a cast speed or attack speed, either of those, depending on what you need. Like this one, for example, has a cast time of 0.2 seconds. I never have figured out what they mean by cast delay on this. So that's something that maybe Tunk you could answer. This is also this is like data mine stuff. It's not like directly from the game. But so each the, the point here being that each skill has that's actually um this is actually not a good example. Um, has a cast or attack speed. Tempest Strike has an attack speed. Tempest Strike we're gonna talk about in a minute too. The cast time, cast delay on that. Um, so yeah, different uh, attacks have different speeds. So that is going to play a factor in how fast your skill will or your attack will go off, along with the weapon itself. Factor those two in, and that's like your your starting position. And from there, you can modify it with increases to attack or cast speed depending on the skill. If it's a spell, it's going to be cast speed. If it's a uh, anything else, it's going to be um, attack speed. Um, there are notable two notable exceptions, ex exceptions that fall under the attack speed. So if you have a throwing or a bow attack, they're going to be modified both from uh, the corresponding attack type. So if it's a throwing attack, if you have throwing attack speed, if it's a bow attack, if you have bow attack speed, they also are modified from general attack speed. And so you can get both going, right? You can get like throwing attack speed and just attack speed, and they're both going to affect it. Cast speed, though, is purely cast speed. Attack speed doesn't affect it at all. Uh, there are a few exceptions to this in, in so far that um, the skill itself doesn't have any potential for attack speed increase. Tempest Strike is one of the favorites of the community into, in so far as we like to beat it up because it has absolutely no attack speed uh, scaling, which takes away a really major feature of scaling damage. Um, and uh, you can really feel it in the end game. So just bear that in mind, Tempest Strike, it doesn't matter how much attack speed you scale. I do believe it has a critical strike chance modifier based on your attack speed, but the actual attack speed itself will not increase. Uh, Dancing Strikes has something similar. It's actually a little bit better, where it's, I think it's more damage with attack speed, but it, your actual attack speed will not increase. But you can speed up Dancing Strikes with cooldown reduction. Um, and then most channeled skills aren't affected by attack or cast speed. Uh, Warpath being an exception there, where you actually can affect it. What's up, Zolak? Okay, let's go to damage conversions. These can be pretty um, confusing. Even for me, with 2,500 plus hours and sometimes these conversions can get a little weird. So if you're trying to convert your damage from one thing to, let's say, like from poison to bleed, there are a lot of ways the game does the conversion that are that give you different outcomes. Um, these are probably not even all of the versions. They're just the ones that I was able to find. So there might be other ways that it does it. But uh, hopefully this will give you a general sense of basically just look and see how it's working. Don't assume. Because it's going to be different. So the first one is convert base damage of a skill. So let's look at Rip Blood's Rip Spirit as an example of this. Whoops, I did not need to do it that way. Uh, Rip Blood, where are you? That is not even the right class. Let's go to Lich. All right. And so we've got Rip Blood here, and then Rip Spirit over here. So what this is going to do is it says, as it says, Rip Blood 
and blood splatters base physical damage is converted to necrotic damage also this damage scales with increases to necrotic damage but not increases to physical damage so this is not all base damage this is rip bloods and blood splatters so if we hover over it we can get the base damage which um i actually just covered up there it is uh base damage 15 physical does this actually give blood splatters it does not uh, i think blood splatters actually use the same so that 15 physical damage that rip blood gives you is now converted to necrotic in this particular scenario that's all that's converted nothing else um it does make it look cool though looks really nice so um and it, it helps it with you know obviously it can scale now with necrotic so that's nice uh next up convert a node or nodes of a skill so let's look at septic wound on the same skill it's actually this one over here so in this particular case what we have is uh gushing wound is before it on the skill tree which gives you bleed chance 20 percent per five total points so you get a total of 100 bleed chance and then if you were to take this node here what it's going to do is it's going to take that node gushing wounds any points you put into it it's converting that over to poison chance so if you had all five points into um gushing wound instead of having 100 bleed you now have 100 poison chance that's that's it that's all it does next up we have a hybrid of the first two which would be as an example infernal shades blood shade oops Go back. There we go. I did it right this time. Infernal Shade. Where are you, Blood Shade? There you are. So in this particular one, we have Infernal Shade's base fire damage converted to physical. So there's that base conversion of the actual skill itself converted. Um, and then all Ignite Chance in this tree is converted to Bleed Chance and effects related to Ignite now depend on Bleed instead. So in this particular case, we have that conversion over from the base fire to Fizz and then any Ignite within the tree itself that you might find will be converted to bleed chance so where is the ignite in this tree well here we go we have ignite chance per second here um and then this is actually ignite effect and uh, this is not chance this would not convert over so really it's pretty much just this one here what would but if there was multiple nodes in here that gave you ignite chance uh it would convert all of those over to bleed anything outside of it no no anything outside if you get ignite chance from your gear or the passive skill tree itself does not convert that it's just the stuff inside okay next one converts all base damage from all sources like this is like a, a, a pretty powerful this is a more powerful version of the first one so harvest we go to harvest where are you harvest there you are and it's actually this note here elements of death harvest based physical damage and added damage is converted to necrotic uh consequently this damage scales with increases in chronic damage but not increase the fizz so notice here where the most important part is harvest based physical damage and added damage so not just the fizz from the skill tree itself but other added damage is converted this is a little ambiguous you might be thinking okay added fizz damage no it's actually added all damage so like if you had cold damage on your weapon this would convert it over to necrotic we know because it's been tested um so nodes like this can be pretty powerful um since you don't necessarily have to get um necrotic damage itself base necrotic damage on your weapons or wherever else you're getting it any added damage you might have will then count next up Converts all sources of a damage type for that skill. So Soul Feast's Thought Corrosion is our example here. I did it again. I was doing so well. Where are you, Soul Feast? Soul Feast, there you are. And Thought Corrosion. Poison Chance from all sources is converted to Armor Shred for Soul Feast. And Armor Shred applied by Soul Feast has increased effect. So the important part here... This poison chance from all sources converted to armor shred. This means any source of poison chance that you might get universally, generally, throughout the entirety of your character that would work on Soul Feast is now going to be armor shred when you use Soul Feast. So this is a very powerful node if you're trying to get lots of armor shred since it gives you an additional opportunity to get poison chance as armor shred along with armor shred itself. And last one is a hybrid of two and four. We have, um, in this particular case, Grave Chill from Reaper Form. This one is actually a weird one. I think this is one I was going to, I was going to ask Tunk on this one, but I forgot to. I did it again. 
ridiculous. I'm pretty, I, I actually test this myself and I'm pretty confident in how it works, but it is ambiguous in the wording, so I'm going to cover that too. Um, so Grave Chill here. All of Reap's damage is converted to cold, even damage added by items. Reap poison chance gained in this tree is converted to chill chance, and Reap gains a freeze rate equal to twice your intelligence. So there's two things that are um, a factor. Like there's, there's more than that obviously going on here. So you have the, the freeze rate that you're given as well. But for our purposes, we have that reaps damage converted to cold, even damage by, added by items. And then reap poison chance gained in this tree is converted to chill chance. So you have the, um, the two factors here. We have from uh, our list here, we've got two converted node or nodes of a skill. Um, and four. Where does four go? Two, three, four. Convert all base damage from all sources. They're actually in reverse on the uh, on the tooltip. So two is the um, re poison damage to cold damage. So the node or nodes in the tree. So any poison we have on here is um, we have poison damage. I assume the poison chance to chill chance, not poison damage to cold damage. So we have um, all the poison chances here will become chill. And then uh, we have the uh, the added damage by items. Now th again, this is worded weirdly. First time I read it, I'm like, okay, all of Reap's damage is converted to cold, even damage added by items. It should probably be worded as even added damage by items. Because it makes it seem like any damage that's added by items, which could inc include increased or more. If you had more, but you probably don't. But all increased could also affect it. But it's just talking about added. Uh, added damage. So those words probably need to be reversed. But yeah, so there's a lot of flavor in uh, damage conversions. So definitely keep that in mind. If you're looking at a node, trying or thinking about doing a conversion, what exactly is it converting? And is it going to do what you needed to do? Okay, last. Last part of our uh, our lesson is minions. So um, minions scale independently from the player. This is the number one thing to know, usually. And I'll cover the exceptions here. But uh, if you're doing increased cold damage and you're trying to run cold minions, you're not actually affecting them you need increased minion cold damage or increased minion damage to actually affect them or something along those lines, something that actually is specific to minions. This also applies to defense, even though we're talking about offense here. Um, if you're working on your defenses for your minions, again, they're going to have their own independent stuff that you have to scale in order to get their defenses up. So your own stuff won't help you in that regard. Fortunately, they're almost always prefixes, if not always prefixes, so you can still scale your own defense while you're scaling your minions defense. But you do have to account for um, scaling the def defense and offense of your minions independently of yourself. With two exceptions, I don't think there's currently any more than two. But uh, first off, we have Manifest Armor as Sentinel. These work a little differently, so I want to show them both. Uh, would help if I had a Sentinel up. Doesn't matter which one I have because I can still look up the, the tree. Uh, Manifest Armor. And so this one's, this one's really cool and weird. Um, stats granted by your body armor, helmet, and glo uh, gloves and boots also apply to your manifest armor. And um, you can actually increase the boost from those stats. Like, here's, uh, here's boots, gloves, armor, helmet. I think that's the only direct boost you have. But uh, you can do a lot of cool things with it. Some people have been experimenting with uh, manifest armor quite a bit and getting some really good results on it. So this one actually does benefit from uh, from your stuff. It also benefits from minion stuff too, so that's really nice. It's like, got like a, a double dip. Um, and the other one is Ballista, which is a rogue skill. Got skills panel. And where are you, Ballista? Ballista, there you are. This one has this note here, or your damage also applies to your Ballista, but at reduced effectiveness. Um, three points, and you have 45% of your damage applying to Ballista. And it's pretty much like universal, as long as the damage type applies to what the Ballista is doing. Um, it will it will affect the ballist itself. Okay. So uh, the other thing you need to know about minions is what actually will affect minions and which minions it will affect as far as the nodes and the fixes go. Cause not every node or not every type affects every one. It's not just minion. Like the first one here we have minions. So like if you have increased minion damage, uh, increased minion dodge rating, increased minion, you name it. Um, that will apply to any type of minion. There are multiple types of minions. So um, examples of other types as we're covering right here. Companions are primalist pets. 
there are nodes and um, I think some affixes that are primal specific that are companion based. What that means is if you have one of the companions, if you have a saber tooth or you have a wolf, um, companion affixes, nodes, what, etc., will affect those. They won't affect any other minion type, so they won't affect, like, uh, they wouldn't affect skeletons, which are not considered companions um, in the Acolytes tree. They won't affect totems. Uh, but totem also has its own. Totems are minions, um, and they have their own um, nodes and I think some affixes that are that are just towards them. So if you have that those particular nodes or fixes, they will affect all totems. They won't affect companions. They won't affect other minions. There's also allies, which should affect which will affect all of these. Allies will also affect other players in multiplayer. We just don't have that yet. Um, does allies include you? Yes, it does include you, Koi. Good question. Um, and then we have shared. Shared is very similar to uh, to, to allies. Actually, it's very similar to for you and your minions. Where um, let me let me just pull up a share. Doesn't always include you. Okay, so there are, apparently are cases where it doesn't include you, which is of course ambiguous. But usually it does, right? Loma, do you have a specific example when it doesn't? Because I know I've had ally stuff that does affect me. Where was I going on this? I was gonna go to oh share right. Let's do uh, let's do this. Uh, so share cold damage here as one example. And you see, it's always gonna tell you this too. It's gonna be like okay, you've got cold damage, and you've got minion uh, cold damage. So you have both, and they're gonna be the, they're gonna be the same number. It's a minion that says allies, and yes, since you are an ally for minions. Gotcha. Okay, so um, so allies of minions, yes. Um, if it's you directly, no. That's good. Uh, good clarification. Thanks, Lama. Okay, and then we have the last one is for you and your minions. These are pretty much identical, by the way. Shared and for you and your minions is pretty much identical. I'm not sure why they're using two naming conventions. Um, you can see it, like it looks the same for you and your a chance to bleed and melee hit for you and your minions. Um, melee chance to bleed on hit for you. Melee uh, minion melee chance to bleed on hit for them, and it's going to be the same number. Quite a few promise notes say allies and yourself. Okay, so if you see allies and yourself, then of course that's going to apply both to your your minions. Um, and, and, and you, if you don't see that and it's for you, if it's, if it says to allies and you're actually casting it, then it won't apply to you. But if it's your minions who are doing something for allies, then it will apply to you. Okay. That's all the minion stuff. Cool. And that's everything for this, uh, this particular lesson. Thank you so much for watching. The next lesson will not be coming out until the next patch uh just sneak tease and sneak uh, preview it's going to be on endgame probably specifically monolith of fate and given what's going to be happening to the monolith of fate that's going to be a pretty pretty good one so uh thanks again for watching i hope you have a great rest of your day i hope you enjoy your time in the last epoch and uh, oh yeah by the way i do stream on twitch five to six days a week feel free to come join us ask questions hanging out Feel free to ask questions in uh, in the YouTube comments. And I also have a Discord if you want to ask questions there. Just hang out with us there as well. We'd love to have you in any or all of those places. All right, that's it for me. Have a great one. And I will see you all again real soon.